this is absolutely insane. Check all this shit out. Look at the size of this one. I just came across this video and it's actually been out for a couple of years already, but it is so insane that I just had to share it with you. It's a giant field of Amanita muscaria. It looks like it's on a golf course or something. Now, Amanita muscaria or fly garrick is one of my personal favorite mushrooms of all time. I love finding it in the wild, but to find this many of them is absolutely insane. And if you haven't seen this before, you might be blown away. So let's go ahead and give it a watch. So this was on Reddit, and I think it's actually the top post on our mycology of all time. But uh, anyways, let's watch it here. Wow, there must be gnomes or something around here. This, this is just absolutely insane. Look at that. Amanitas are absolutely. Look at, look at this one. Look at how many they are. Oh, wow. This is absolutely insane. I mean, if this was some other mushroom, it'd be like, whatever, but it's Amanita muscaria. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's towards the end of its cycle, I'd say. Try not to stand on any. Look at them all, as far as the eye can see. Sick. All different sizes. I can't believe they're called. Or, man, look at the size of this one. All different sizes. Yeah, this one. Look at the size of this one. Shit. That's pretty awesome pretty big. Now the cool thing about Amanita muscaria is it looks quite different through different stages of its life cycle. Seeing a field like this, you can see all the stages of the life cycle, which is super cool. So this big one here is obviously near the end. It's already opened up completely. The spores have dropped to go fly through the air and make more mushrooms somewhere else. But when it's small, it's in its egg form. And sometimes it doesn't even look like Amanita muscaria. When you first find it, when it's first growing, it almost kind of can look like a puffball or something like that. It if you are hunting puffballs, you wanna make sure you cut it in half to see that it's not actually an Amanita muscaria or some other species of Amanita that often grows in that egg form. Like I've said, I found these eggs before, you cut it in half and you can just barely see the faint kind of ghostly resemblance of Amanita muscaria mushroom. Of course, eventually they break through that and that egg form just stays at the bottom of the mushroom, but all different stages of growth, which is really cool to see. Let's keep watching. Yeah, fly gargic or um, Amanita muscaria, I believe is the uh, Latin term of these. Look. This guy's so excited. I don't blame him. Far out. Oh, that's as big as my foot. <laughs> fly gargic because the pest lie on the top or they used to make some kind of a pesticide out of these. Yeah, and that's actually true. So the mushroom is called Amanita muscaria. That's a Latin name, right? But it's also called the fly agaric because it was often used to keep flies away. So it is toxic to flies and that's because of the ibotenic acid that's in the mushroom. The role that this plays in the mushroom is kind of interesting because again, the mushroom doesn't want anything to mess with it until it's through the egg form, until the cap has had a chance to open up completely so the spores can fly away. And if you measure the levels of ibotenic acid in this mushroom, they're most concentrated when it's still in this small egg form, but once it opens up, the levels of ibotenic acid drop substantially because at that point in time, it doesn't matter if flies go under it because that might even help to spread the spores. Look at that cute little. So perfect. That is crazy. There must be fairies around here. I agree. Just an endless field of them. This is crazy. Mystical, magical properties. Oh, sorry, I got taken aback by this one. Oh, oh, that, that so yeah. oh man. Nice bundle of them. Photo while I'm filming. Look at that. Those are gorgeous. You don't often see them. I don't often see them all growing together in a clump like that. Yeah, see, look, there's an insect stuck on the top. Oh. Oh, yeah. Far out. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so stoked. I don't blame him. Oh. I'd be pretty excited if I saw that. These look like they've been oh, yeah. And just under these trees. Oh, look in there as well. Yeah, and actually that's an important point. I'm glad you mentioned that because Amanita muscaria is a mycorrhizal mushroom. That means that it grows in symbiosis with other plants or other trees, specifically in the case of Amanita muscaria, pine trees. They're sharing resources with the tree and the trees sharing resources with them. And that's why you often find Amanita muscaria growing underneath trees. They'll often sometimes be in transition zones as well, which kind of makes sense where it's growing here in a golf course. Now where I typically find them, Telluride is where I found the most most of them and they're in these like big open areas in the transition zones where the forest goes into the big open meadow and that's where sometimes you can find a lot of them so it actually makes sense that you might see them on a golf course like this growing under and around the trees yeah i'm gonna just do a bit of a flyby <laughs> just a forest of amanitas i've never seen anything like this ever this is crazy this would be a bucket list item to see a field like this I'm trying not to stand right look how they start out white 
The mycelium patch under these would just be phenomenal. Don't want to eat these ones. They've got this ibuteric acid in them. Makes you feel super crook. <laughs> Super crook. This is actually a point of contention among a lot of people, right? Because yes, Amanita muscaria contains something called ibotenic acid, which through a process of decarboxylation, when you ingest it, turns into muscimol, and muscimol is indeed psychoactive. And there is a lot of information out there and people think you just, you can't eat these mushrooms, you should totally avoid them. And for sure, I'm not saying uh, that you should go ahead and eat Amanita muscaria, but what I am saying is that plenty of people will use this mushroom for various purposes. And not only that, it's actually being studied right now, especially in Canada, they're doing some clinical trials on using various extracts of this mushroom for things like anxiety and things like depression. There's people on YouTube like Amanita Dreamer, who's doing a lot of education around Amanita muscaria. This mushroom's also been used historically for various medicinal purposes. So yeah, there seems to be this idea that this is like a poisonous mushroom, it's a toxic mushroom. And I guess how you define toxicity might kind of uh, change your opinion on that. Again, there's a lot of varying amounts of information about this mushroom, but there are a lot of cool people studying it right now, trying to really understand this mushroom. So yes, it could be considered poisonous, but it might also have a lot of super legitimate uses as well. There's another variety there. Yeah, not a nice way. Like how there's a couple of non-amanitas that snuck in there. Tribes, the shaman would feed them to a horse. The horse would then eat it its kidneys and that would filter out all the yucky. They'd drink the wee. Three times they'd repeat that process to get the pure hallucinogenic and off they go to La La Land. <laughs> they would drink the wee. So this whole idea of feeding animals Amity muscaria and then drinking their pee, I've definitely heard of this before. Actually, we did do a video on whether or not Santa Claus is based off of a mushroom, speaking specifically about Amity muscaria, and this idea that people in Siberia used to feed the mushroom to reindeer, the reindeer would pee, and then they would use the reindeer pee, which would apparently contain the compounds like muscimol that cause these psychoactive effects, but wouldn't include the compounds that cause maybe discomfort or illness or whatever. And for whatever reason, the compounds can easily pass through the urinary tract or the kidneys of animals and almost get processed in a way, and it can last through a number of cycles. So that's kind of what he's referring to here. Let's gonna have a look up on the ridge over here as well, Darwin. I wonder how many, I, they should have counted them. There's at least a thousand. And just check all this shit out. <laughs> I said I just slipped on something Did there. You? There yeah, you go. Wow. So much growling and grunting. I don't blame them. It's pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. Okay, I think that's it. I wonder how many they, if they would have actually counted them, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand? That's an insane amount of Amanita. Let's look at some of the comments here. <laughs> OP sounds like the Steve Irwin of mycology. That's true. Again, where was this? Yeah, Tasmania. So, that's funny. The growling is completely warranted. This is a once in a lifetime find. I agree. I wonder if you went back to this golf course though, if you would see something like that. I mean, again, I found a couple times in Telluride, maybe, you know, a hundred or so Amanita. And even then I was blown away. And where I found them, they were growing kind of in these big, almost like fairy rings, circles of Amanita. They were growing with some Boletus edulis and some other mushrooms, but it was still like amazing to see. Nothing compared to this particular video. Whoa, this guy says, wow, your post made me realize that Tasmania is an anagram of Amanitas. Is that true? M A M A N I. Holy crap, it's true. <laughs> That's pretty cool. There you go. This guy narrating is 100% how everyone in the sub would react. I agree. I would have gone pretty nuts. It's pretty insane. Such a healthy fungi network. Yeah, I mean, I don't know as much about fungi networks and underground networks as I really should, but that is amazing to think if it, like, it's just like one giant network, kind of like the honey mushroom in Oregon that takes up multiple football fields. If that was like one giant organism that lives underground that just all fruited at once, or if it was a bunch, right, of a bunch of competing colonies that were just fruiting at once. There was some other mushrooms in there. He said like some slippery jacks and a couple other species that I didn't recognize. It wasn't just Amanita. So so maybe it could have been a couple different colonies. Anyways, that was insane. I've, again, never seen anything like that in my life, but Amanita muscaria is such a fascinating mushroom. Like we really know so little about it. And even though there has been a number of books written about it, a lot of people are studying it. When you think about mushrooms like, you know, Psilocybe mushrooms or Psilocybe cupensis, where people really understand it, Amanita muscaria seems to be a lot more mysterious, but it is such an iconic mushroom, right? It's like the mushroom emoji is based off of Amanita muscaria. It's just such a classic looking mushroom. Yeah, I'm hoping to go and hunt it a bunch because what I didn't realize is here in Alberta, it actually does grow a lot. I find that some years it grows a lot, some years it doesn't 
grow very well at all. I did find a pretty cool location last summer that I'm hoping to return to and see if I can find a bunch more Amanita muscaria. Here's a dried one. Pretty nice, pretty cool mushroom, pretty awesome to find. Can't cultivate it, and even if you aren't necessarily wanting to use it or eat it or anything like that, it's still just such a joy to find this mushroom. There's also this book, Fly Garrick by uh, Kevin Feeney. I'm hoping to interview him on The Mushroom Show to learn more about this mushroom. Look at this, it's a pretty thick book. Lots of information here, all about this fascinating mushroom. So I'm hoping to learn a lot more and share all of that with you, but uh, I just thought I'd share that super cool video that I found on Reddit. So we'll see you in the next one. Do you wanna become a functional mushroom expert, I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.